For those of you who may not know me, my name is Patrick Doyle. I am a coach, been working with women in destructive and emotionally abusive relationships for a long time. I myself have a lot of uh, experience with uh, abuse. I was raised in an abusive home. So I know the nuances of abuse that you can't know unless you've been through it. So I'm also really passionate about helping people get out of it because it's so damaging. When you're talking about emotional abuse, particularly, it's the abuse that no one can see and makes you feel crazy. So really excited about this. So two reasons, right, that uh, women stay in emotionally abusive relationships. What I want to talk about today. Um, number one, I hear this as every, almost every day. One of the main reasons why women stay is because of religious beliefs. They go to their pastor and their pastor says, look, what you need to do is just be nicer. Have more sex. Cook better meals. Be kind to him. And if you do that, everything will work out. And if any of you have been in that situation, you know that does not work. If you do not set a boundary with an abuser, they just abuse you more. So, and as a side note, just let me give you a little history here. I mean, I've been in the church 30 years. And I, years ago, planted and pastored a church for almost 10 years. And so not only do I understand the damage that happens to women in this situation, because I've talked to thousands of them, I also understand from the side of the pastor who historically would have given you the bad advice. So I, you know, understand theologically why the church has this, what I would say is they idolize marriage. So when you go into the pastor's office and you sit down, as soon as you sit down, before you ever say one thing, the pastor has an agenda. And that agenda is to keep you together. And so at that point, the pastor can't listen to what you're saying because he has an agenda. So, and again, I'm not trying to say that their agenda is wrong. What I'm saying is it's very unhealthy if you're in an abusive relationship. If two people have goodwill, and they're just having some difficulty, okay, having an agenda of keeping it together is fine. If you're in an abusive relationship, keeping it together is not a good agenda. And what happens is, is that they just end up re-victimizing over and over again the person who's being harmed. And so I also understand at a deep level the church lingo. I understand the theology. I understand why those people are saying that. And as much as I disagree with them now and my previous self, I know that they sincerely believe it. And so for a woman in this situation, you go to get help and instead of help, you get blame. How tragic is that? And so I see the pain of that all the time with women who are in that situation. And then the abuser sitting there with the pastor and the pastor makes the woman the, pa the problem. Now we have two problems. And the other thing that I've seen over and over again is that women end up being in a situation where they're blamed for the abuse by well-meaning, well-intentioned, but naive and unaware people in positions of leadership. The other thing that happens is the woman starts to feel even more crazy because she is going there to get help. These people are in place, uh, positions of spiritual authority and they've been trusted. And so now you have the situation where the person that you're going to for spiritual authority and trust is telling you you're the problem. So it deepens that level of, I feel crazy. And I know many of the women I've talked to have said that to me. Uh, I've felt that myself that, you know, now you're not only are you a bad wife, but you're failing God. Well, now what do you do? Except get more depressed, more overwhelmed, more strung out more hopeless, and you take on more and more shame. And so the, the spiritual level shame is the worst because it's God saying that you're the problem. And so in these situations where the church, in my estimation, vast majority of times, completely mishandles these situations. And it's because they don't, they don't have the will, generally speaking, to get involved at a level of honesty that would make a difference. And the other reason is because they have a theological un underpinning that says that divorce is wrong. And let's talk about that for a second because that's embedded in this reason is women stay because divorce is wrong. Well, from a biblical perspective, that isn't true. Uh, I could argue that um, very 
well if you want it, but I don't think this is the place for that. But I do not believe that divorce is wrong. I don't believe that it's it's something that God is against or hates. If you you know look at like when Moses and um, had a conversation with God because he went to God and said, "Hey, you you have to help me. The men are putting their wives out for you know all kinds of reasons." If you remember, all throughout the Bible, women never had a place of any sort of value. They are they were a commodity. They were property. This is how they were seen in that culture. So. We can't forget that when we look at the scripture, but we often put a Western lens on it. So Moses goes to God and says, you got to help me because the men are putting them out. In that culture, Moses is out in the wilderness with these people. He has to take care of them. He's overwhelmed. So he says to God, you have to let me give them a certificate of divorce so they can get somebody else. The whole point of it, so they could get somebody else. You'd be hard pressed to hear a pastor today say that that that's really what God's point was. Do you think that God, when he said, yes, I'll allow this because of the hardness of their hearts, was talking only about Jewish men? (laughs) No, hardness of heart has been a problem of humanity for centuries. It's still present. So this idea that divorce is wrong, I disagree with. If you're being abused, divorce is a good plan for you. We need to be strategic about how to get there. And we also need to be strategic about how we help you heal from the lies you've been told from well-meaning people that want to put your marriage back together. If you're in an abusive or dangerous relationship, separation should be the goal, not togetherness. So rule number, well, problem number one that keeps women in these relationships is religious beliefs, okay? That you're told by by the church that you're in or the pastor that you have that this is what you're supposed to do is to stay. Number two, <clears throat> denial, you have denial about what's really happening that's supported by your religious beliefs. So if you believe that you're the problem because that's what the pastor said, you have a big hurdle to climb. And I'm telling you right now that denial is the number one thing that you use to keep yourself in a situation where you're being harmed. If you started to look at the harm, you would do something different. I talk about it all the time. And it's this, that when you're being harmed, you have to get some separation so that you can internally and emotionally detox from the trauma and the pain and the lies and the manipulation and, and the blame shifting and the justification and the spiritualization that you live with with somebody who is abusive on an emotional level. So when your denial is spiritualized, it's way harder to overcome. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you if you start to then examine your belief structure, now you're really feeling a sense of deconstruction in your life in general. Because if that religious belief structure has been part of the reason why you deny the reality you're in, because you're not doing enough, you're not cooking enough meals that are good, you're not having enough sex, you're not being a submissive wife, you're not you know, uh, you're too, uh, you're hard-hearted, you have the spirit of Jezebel. I mean, there's all these things that are basically blames that help the person that's harming you avoid responsibility, and then they're in the seat of authority because you're not doing the right thing by the religious standard that your church is giving you, which in my estimation is probably wrong if you're being harmed. I do not believe that God ever wants his creation to be devalued. When you're in a relationship that's systematically destroying you on an emotional, spiritual level, I don't believe that's something God ever wants. And for the person who's doing it, I've said this many times, the most loving thing you can do when someone is harming you is stop them. That's loving them. Being patient and taking more abuse and allowing them to harm you more and giving them the bit for the doubt and taking hopium so that you can keep going in this horrible situation is not loving at all. And it's not Christian from my perspective. It's actually very unkind, both to you, to the person you're with, and to your children. So one of the things that kids get from this is they watch us handle our difficulty. So if by being passive and allowing this and telling ourselves that we're the problem, What are we teaching them? That when someone harms you, you just take it. I guarantee you no mom out there wants to teach their kid that. But a lot of times in the church, 
in the church system, that's what we teach. So we have, you know, our spiritual belief structure, our religion, our theology, whatever you want to call it, that tells us we have to stay. I completely disagree with that. Then we have, you know, uh, denial that's built into us by that system. So that system says, yeah, God wants you to stay. If I had a, a dollar for every time I heard a woman say that she had to stay because that's what God wanted her to do, I would have a lot of dollars. And I just don't believe that if you're being systematically destroyed. And um, this is a very unpopular, I take a lot of flack for this. I, a lot of pastors have written me angry letters and give me angry voicemails because I say this. But I'm here to tell you that if you allow someone to harm you for whatever reason, they're not going to stop. Because the abuser has Olympic level denial. They believe what they are saying. They don't have any connection with reality. So when they read the Bible, they see your faults. They see your problem. They don't see theirs. And so to get out of that, you cannot play their game. So this is a huge piece of helping women get out of destructive relationships, particularly in the church, because those belief structures are part of what keep them stuck. And so I want to help, which is one of the reasons why I create a pathway to hope, which you can see in the comments below. It's um, many years of work of my team and I have put together a whole new um, website that's a membership site for you to go to to get the information. And I talk a lot about this in the videos. And then along with it, you get a community of people who understand this and support it. And I, I've been in the community a lot the last couple of days. We launched on Monday and it's amazing to me to see the, the, the safety and the hope and, and the women being able to exchange ideas in a safe place about their situation, like why they believe that they should stay and what their difficulty is currently in getting out, whether they're in the very beginning process of identifying it or if they're in the process of, I've already identified it, I've made a boundary and I'm out and I'm, in it, I'm divorced and now I'm trying to live free. But listen, if you get away from an abuser today, it's gonna take you time to detox because that those lies go deep and they go even deeper if it was entangled in your religious or spiritual system. So again, one of the reasons why I uh, want you to hear these things is because this is not something you're going to hear in general public in the church. We, this, I mean, look around, look, read the internet, and look at all the trouble the Southern Baptists are in with covering up sexual abuse. Denial is it might be hard to believe, but denial is a part of a lot of religious systems. I mean, how many people go to church every day, to be honest? Well, practically no one. We don't go to church to be honest. We go to church to fit in, to look good, to be spiritual, to do good, to be better. Those things are not going to help you move from a place of abuse and harm to a place of safety.